Okay, we've got our mechanical installation of the Rodan complete. And today we're going to finalize the battery installation. Uh, my custom homemade battery box and the charging system. So let's get to work. And everything's going to go right down there. Which means, unfortunately, I got to get my fat ass down there. This is how a fat guy gets into the bilge. I keep a lot of stuff in the forward bilge of my boat and I knew I wanted to put the batteries in some kind of protective box and I couldn't find anything commercially available so I decided to make one myself. This one is made out of eighth inch aluminum uh, and it is painted with bed liner paint. This battery box was going to commandeer the space I used uh, to store tools in five gallon buckets with lids. So uh, I needed to come up with a new solution for tool storage. So I chose the Milwaukee Packouts and I integrated the Packout base into the lid of the box. Because of the tape of the hull, I had to raise that box up a little bit on some feet I made out of starboard. Uh, and I glued those to the hull with some marine adhesive and the box itself is mounted to the bulkhead with self-tapping screws. Here I'm using 6 gauge marine tinned wire uh, to run the battery leads from the um, anchor locker area back to the battery box. And you can see I've taped them every 12 to 15 inches. I've run them over this bulkhead and I know I'm going to have a terrible time trying to get them from inside the forward bilge. <sighs> oh, no fish tape needed. Look at that. I see you. <laughs> All right. I've wire tied the battery cables that I've run up in the stock locations. I'm using the clips that uh, the manufacturer had epoxied into the hull. So I know it's good and strong. The positive lead needs to be protected by a 50 amp breaker and you need to mount that as close to the battery box as possible. When putting ends on heavy gauge wire I like to index them. Uh, so before crimping I'll just uh, line them up on the stud here and use a sharpie to mark uh, how I want it oriented on the wire. And then I'll go crimp it. Try to do most of your crimping deck side because uh, it's really hard to do that in the bilge of the boat. And don't forget the heat shrink on the cable ends. The breaker should look like this when you're done. On the motor side of the battery leads, I'm using a junction box from Home Depot. Just swap out the hardware with some stainless steel screws. And I'm also using some waterproof cord connectors for 3 8 wire that I found on Amazon. Use the template that came with the Rodan plug to lay out where you're going to drill. Then just connect the dots and cut the rest of the hole out with a multi-tool. There's no room to get a socket on these studs, so make sure you have a 10 millimeter open and wrench with you. When you're all done, uh, your Rodan plug will look something like this. I chose a DC charging system so that the batteries can be charged when I'm running the outboards or when I'm connected to shore power at the dock utilizing my existing AC charger. The charger needs ground and power for my cranking batteries which are located under the helm seat and having this photograph of the boat being built showed me that there's a conduit that runs uh, from the helm seat up to the head area. That wire chase conduit on the 301 Cobia is right behind this cabinet. Uh, once you take the screws out, a heat gun and a wide putty knife will allow you to remove all the drawers. I found removing this grommet gave me easier access to that conduit and wouldn't you know it, the first time I put this wire tape through it goes all the way up to the bow. 
then all I need to do is tape my wires uh, to the fish tape along with a uh, chase cord for future use and I was in business. The two wires I ran go right to the battery charger and you can see here now I'm hooking the output from the battery charger to the batteries. The charging system I purchased came with a gauge, you just need to find a place to mount it and then run your wires from the gauge to the charger. Here's my battery box with my tools on top. There's the Stealth One charging system. DC charging system. I've got my breaker over here, 50 amp breaker. Chose to go with um, this is the center section that came uh, with the kit, the ram ram mount. But I did buy the ram mount uh, small and the ram mount medium. Um, I don't have anything against drilling holes in the boat but the mount that they would give you to put on the deck, if you took this off, you'd have this big ball sticking up. Uh, so I wasn't really into that. They also make something that would work for a rod holder, uh, but as you can see, my rod holders don't really line up. Uh, this one may have been able to do something. One thing I think I'm gonna try to do this winter is uh, swap out, take this housing off and see if I can swap the wires around. So I can have that wire coming out this side. And that's where we're going to plug it in. It's probably the time I should read the instructions. I can install the motor, but I don't know how to use it. So I had to break down and read the instructions. I hope this helps you with your own installation. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks and tight lines.